Right, all right, all right, guys. We're gonna go old school. A matchup straight out of 2012, or so you would assume. Look at these two names up here in the top left hand side. The big boy himself, the captain, the conductor of the soul train. It is parting. 2012 global champion of StarCraft at the BlizzCon World Champion, uh, sorry, the Blizzard World Championships, the BWC. Held in China, an absolute shit show of a tournament, but a very competitive and impressive one where he soul trained his way to victory with the models and sentries. Um, I believe that was the tournament where they had the power out, or not the power out, but the internet was down or something for like four hours. So there was just uh, Polo and Day9 on stage trying to fill time for three hours straight, just talking to each other. And Day9 just like got hysterical and started laughing. It was kind of great. Anyway, down here in the bottom right hand side, we have the world's favorite French Tunisian player. The, the party boy himself, um, bloody drunk, badass, amazing, no shoe wearing, uh, little fluffy bunny rabbit, badass with absolutely no filter. Have I said badass? Yeah, he's pretty badass. His name is Stefano. Uh, I'm not sure what Go stands for, guys. What's Stefano's team? Uh, Gamers Origin, right? Oh my god! <laughs> I actually have watched this series, guys, but I forgot how it started. Fuck yes! Farting comes in with the gateway and the forge, drops the triple pilot on the high ground, goes for the wall off. These drones are like, you piece of shit. Um, he's not even going to react other than that. Stefano's like, all right, you can you can get your filthy cannon rush up. Even if I break these pylons, by the time I get through, there'll be more cannons down on the low ground. So Parting, getting up this very, very filthy cannon rush. And I think Stefano's going to have to cancel that hatchery. Let's see, is he going to go for it? He doesn't have any other drones on the low ground. And that's a problem because if you're going to get contained on one base, that sucks. Normally, you want to go proxy hatch the Protoss uh, or hide a hatchery on the map. And he's going to sneak two drones. He's going to let this finish as well, though. Okay. Now, there is one advantage to this. Notice these cannons are over on the right. They can't reach here. So, yeah, if he builds Zergings, he can run them. He's already rallied it to the left, and then he can go force a cannon at home and uh, also protect his hatcheries from any uh, any sneaky cannon rushes. So, Stefano's going to try and play what... If you were a robot, I feel like you could always win from this scenario as the Zerg, but it is so hard to execute, right? You're, you're not a robot, and trying to macro a base over here, and I think he's going to take a base over here as well. It's like, it's just hard. It's just so freaking hard to actually spend your money correctly. Meanwhile, Parting's like, yeah, not even going to take a Nexus, man. <laughs> he's just kind of giggling to himself, building a Zealot here. He's got three Partings. He's got a gateway up on the front as well. Uh, and the Cybercore is finished. So I think we're, yeah, we're, I believe this is the Stalker version. A lot of people would proxy a robo with this, but it takes a while to get immortals out. Instead, Parting says, you know what? If I wait for immortals, you can get Ravagers out, Spines, you can clear these pylons, kill the cannons from the high ground. But if he gets Stalkers out and starts, yeah, throwing down shield batteries immediately, then it becomes so hard for the Zerg to actually survive. Stefano's building a Spine. He's got a Queen here starting to break out. Uh, it gets very scary, though. These Stalkers can just, like, come in and snipe away at the Queens and Spine Crawlers, run back to the Shield Batteries for healing, and then start fighting again. Hatchery actually ends up going down here. A very bizarre Hatchery location. Uh, if he clears all this up, that's great. It's nice and close to your main, but otherwise it's super exposed. Uh, he's, gonna, he's got Ling Speed, right? Yeah, Ling Speed is now ready. There's a couple Lings out here. Drones starting to build that base as well as Queens. This Zealot is on the hunt. Parting's like, I know you've hidden a hatch somewhere. Give it to me. Ooh, gets an Overlord. A sexy, sexy snipe there. Parting's feeling very, very good about this game so far. Knows that Stefano's the one who's got the pressure on. Stefano trying to add another spine. He's got a transfuse ready, but look at the micro. Notice how the spine crawler, it doesn't get time to, to hit the, the, the stalkers when they go in and out because it's shooting the pylons. There's, there's nothing he could do. Now the pylon's gone. Now the spine will at least land a hit every time the stalkers come forward. With the shield battery there, they don't care. The transfuse has already been used. Ooh, parting with a slight screw up there. I think he's got to target the spine down. He's actually... Yeah, there we go. He's starting to target the spine. Second spine's almost ready, though. So at least Stefano's bought time for that. The queen's fighting alongside it. Uh, but there's still plenty of shield battery energy. And even more shield batteries go down. The Lord of Filth himself. Big boy parting pulls out the big boy cannon rush. And says, mass stalkers and shield batteries. Let's go. 
Uh, there is a lair about halfway done over at the proxy base. Stefano, though, still only has a couple of drones mining. He does have Inject landing there, though, so he's going to have a lot more fresh lava at those bases in the near future. Now, Parting, of course, is aware of these Zerglings, but he's got shield batteries about to finish. He can't get... If he gets surrounded there, he might go down, but once those shield batteries are finished, it's actually, like, completely fine. As long as his Stalkers get up against the wall to limit the Zergling surface area, I don't think that's enough lings to take these down. He's even building a fourth and a fifth shield battery. This is a ridiculous investment from Parting, and now he's just got to bait the Zerglings into trying to surround him. Yeah, yeah, look, he says, look, I'm in the corner. I'm in the corner. Come fight me. Stefano thinks it's a good idea, but it's terrible. Immediately disengages. Good call by Stefano. You can't fight this. Stefano's main base is about to get taken out here. That, once that spine goes down, I mean, the other spine's not ready yet. There's too many zealots and stalkers. He's got so little left. He's trying to build a nidus worm. He's building it proxied as well as an evolution chamber. Uh, and he can, of course, use that to evacuate. The advantage of building it there rather than here is even if you build it here and get an exit... Uh, once you lose the original Nidus, you can't create any more exits from it, so... Like, you can still get those units out that were already loaded up, but this way he can he can use it to evacuate the units, uh, he hopes, and, uh, and get them out of there. Yeah, this spine is buying valuable time right now. That knight is not quite ready yet. He's got a lot of drones up here, though, 11, and he's actually got drones mining there, and that queen built. He's trying to just play in this down and dirty situation. He's got plus one mail in the way. The butthole finishes. He's got to pop one out. There we go. The butthole starts to burrow through the ground, starts running. The broodling's going to come out. The zergling's threatening there. The broodling's going to just have a bit of a nibble, do some damage on these units. The zealots and stalkers, though, not giving him time. He does not want to let Stefano get out of here. The zergling's forced to engage to protect those drones. The drones are evacuating. The Zerglings surround one or two Stalkers. Kill maybe one Zealot as well. But the Zerglings, the Queens, the drones, everything evacuates. And Parting says, that's all right. I've cleared up your base. Let's kill that Nidus. The drones are going to pop out. This is going to be immediately saturated. And what a chaotic game number one we have in this best of five series. This is a sick match. Of course, if you're just tuning in, this is a Home Story replay cast. Home Story Cop replay cast. This is from the round of eight in the upper bracket. So roughly the round of 16. It's a best of five format. First to three wins, we'll take it out. Uh, and both players were giving each other a lot of attitude on camera. We saw both before and during this series. So it's always a pleasure bringing this one out. Uh, the drones are going to have to evacuate. Yeah, this hatchery was terribly placed. It really should have been in this corner. Uh, he had the drone up there earlier. I don't know if a probe found it or something. So we decided to change where he was building it. I just, I really don't like it. Um, meanwhile, Parting is like, where the shit? Oh, he's like, cool, I've won. I've killed your expansion. He somehow, he scouted so many places, but he hasn't seen this expansion. There's even creep spreading from it in two directions. Plus one melee is about to be done. A ton more Zerglings are on the way. Those drones evacuated. The Stalkers and the Zealots still running around. All Parting is doing, he's got Warp Gate and two Gateways. He's got two Sentries at home. He's thinking about expanding. I, I don't think he realizes how many drones Stefano got out and the fact that he's actually had his bases money. Oh, and here comes the cheeky butthole. Is that in vision? No, it's completely out of vision. There's no way for Parting to react. He kills an overlord. He finds this hatchery. He's like hallucinate scouting. He finds that hatch. He has still has not found this super weird hatchery location that Stefano went for on the left. Plus one Zerglings shredding the worker line. Oh man, they're all getting wrecked. Force field, force field, force field. Okay. Saves the probes for now. Has that Nexus over there. But this Nidus Worm looking really good. I mean, he could have recalled to save this, but he chooses not to. He founds the base. There we go. Parting goes for it. That Spine Crawler is going to disappear. But no, the Transfuses. It's getting so many hits. It finally falls. But most of the Zealots are already gone. And once those Zealots are gone, Zerglings with plus one are amazing versus Stalkers. You know what? Stalkers kind of suck at killing drones as well. Oh, three of them get surrounded. And a bunch of them do end up falling. Are the drones going to continue drilling? No, they're going to fall back. Another Zealot does go down in the back end of that fight. It looks like it's just Queens versus Stalkers. But we do have more Zerglings on the way at the same time. A Zealot just killed ten drones up in the top right-hand side of this map. Uh, but, you know, Parting's not mining right now. These Zerglings unloaded from the Nidus. They came back, and Stefano brings it back, punches Parting in the face, and wags his finger in front of his nose and says, no. -uh. Big brain, big APM, and most importantly, exceptionally flexible Stefano manages to take out game number one. Very, very impressive play. I'm so confused about the natural not being cancelled. Was that a mistake? Uh, as, I, as I said, Logic Soldier, I mean, I, I, I feel like it, there's always the chance that it's a mistake, but I very much doubt it is. I, I'm pretty sure Stefano would have cancelled it. Um, he built Zerglings from it. And 
I think he built two pairs of lings from it, but he was he was yeah. He also could have built more drains, more um more drains, more drones, more br brain and drones. I combined it in my brain. Uh, so yeah, I think honestly, just building a few zerglings there to make sure you force cannons at home and you stop parting from cannon rushing your other expansions. I think it, I think it made sense. Um, it's not something where you have it perfectly mapped out that situation, but I think it was a pretty good uh, adjustment. So, uh, good luck, have fun, Deviant, says Stefano. Parting's like, what the hell does a Deviant... What the hell is a Deviant, man? I don't even know what that means. Dude, I've got basic English. I, I don't know advanced words like that. Yes, parting. Parting, by the way, guys, you might be like, well, parting, I haven't seen him around for a while. He took a two-year break from StarCraft. I think he actually... Did he win the last Home Story Cup he went to? I think he might have. Up here in the top right-hand side, in the blue, it is Stefano. <laughs> But yeah, basically, he came back in the last, like, what, four, five months, super hardcore streaming every day, and we're like, cool, Parting's gonna come back and be an entertainer. And then, uh, he, I think, just got mad that he was dropping ladder games to plebs, uh, like, game time, plebs like me, and, uh, he was like, nah, nah, game time's a lot less of a pleb than I am, uh, I take that back. Putting, putting game time in the same boat as me is a bit rude to him. But uh, yeah, yeah, basically Parting was like, nah, I'm just going to grind Korean Ladder for a bit. Still streams a lot. Still has a friggin' awesome audience. Everyone loves his terrible mic quality. He, uh, We all love the, the finger in the camera move, which is his favorite. That's his trademark. I find myself doing it just because I, I think it's so funny. Um, just giving the finger to the camera. It's, it's just the Parting move. Most importantly, though, he decided to try to qualify for GSL. Do you know what he did there, guys? Do you know what he did? He knocked out Neeb and Scarlet in the qualifier. What's a pleb? Uh, a, a plebeian. A, uh, a basic bitch. One who is not of the, uh, of the aristocracy necessarily. One who is not a patrician. Not of as noble birth as those who come from the ancient and royal families of Rome. Those who deserve high office. Large amounts of money. And of course... To brutally, brutally, brutally take advantage of all of their colonies uh, in order to gain personal wealth. Great, great uh, colonial civilization, Rome. They loved, loved slavery. They loved fucking just, just kind of casually harvesting people. But uh, yeah, basically, uh, pleb, I, I really would love to like find the etymology of how this became just a general internet word for someone who's a basic bitch. But it's happened. It's happened. Anyway, long story short, parting is the furthest thing possible from a basic bitch. He, he knocked out Scarlet and Neeb in the qualifiers for GSL. He, he's qualified for GSL, came to Home Story Cup and tore off a bunch of people's faces. He is so good at the game right now. It's, it's insane. Stefano, did he spot the Stargate? He did see the Stargate, but he doesn't know what's being built out of it. His overlord's kind of patrolling around here, taking a look around. That's a very fast robo. That's a, a very fast robo. Stefano sees it. That's got to raise eyebrows. That's got to raise eyebrows for sure. That's such a fast robo. Interesting. I'm like, what does this mean? What does this warp prism mean? Twilight Council goes down. It could just be to scare your opponent, try and get a bit of an overreaction. I'm, I'm very curious to see where it goes. Maybe just do some very light prism adept pressure or just like rock up with the prism and be like, ooh, I've got a prism, you know? Uh, in a way, uh, it can bait the Zerg into underestimating the oracle pressure, into over preparing for aggression that's not coming. I'm very curious to see where it goes. Yeah, it's just two adepts. It's just two adepts in there. Warps in a zealot in the wall, gets a shield battery, and then he's just going to go into, I believe, a delayed archon drop with the t Twilight Council. Oracle and Phoenix coming in on the third. The spore's not quite done yet, but oh my god, that timing. And does he focus it? Yeah, he focused it on the spore on the Oracle manually. Builds an extractor and a spore to save them and takes out the Oracle. An amazing trade. Two adepts drop in the main. And the Zerglings are gonna say, nah man. One, two, three drones go down to the adepts, two to the Oracle. But he loses both adepts in the Oracle. That's a fantastic trade for Stefano. Under normal conditions. Uh, look at the worker count. Stefano's down 10 workers. Stefano 
built quite a few queens, six queens, and he's built a ton of zerglings, 32 lings. This is an insane zergling count, and the prism actually, it went backwards there, and it missed this ling flood coming across the map, so he only sees a few of the zerglings. He doesn't realize just how many lings. If he knew there were that many zerglings out right now, parting would probably just be very defensive and turtle up, but instead he's moving down to take a third, loses the probe. Stefano actually shows his hand a little bit early here. And he's going to stick, just click on the cyber core. This is very scary as parting. Yeah, he's got to warp in at home. But he wanted to be warping in his High Templar on the other side of the map. His Templar Archives is done. He wanted to warp in four High Templar, turn them into Archons, and start pressuring. Instead, he has to warp in a few Adepts and a Zealot at home. Adepts not really the unit he wants right now either, as Charge is almost done. And suddenly Stefano has messed up parting's build a good little bit. Does it matter though? Parting is still ahead for workers. Right now, Parting is still in a perfectly fine position. Yeah, we're seeing Stefano drone up to 50 workers. He's adding three more queens, the psychopath. Mass queen Zergling. This sick puppy. Uh, does he have a lair finished? He does. Yeah, I mean, he's going to get some very nice mineral saturation. The Lings are going to come in. They're going to find the third base. And that's a nice cancel. I do like the evacuation by Parting. But Parting, you got to stay up against the wall. He cannot afford to get surrounded against plus one melee Zerglings. And finally, the Archon drop is ready to go in. It's already been delayed about a minute from when he wanted to be hitting with it. It's going to enter the base. He will take out an Overlord, but that's a lot of Queens. He's going to have to just leave. So finds a tiny little fragment of damage. And oh, the Zealots and Adepts not in position. Complete surround goes down. Massive misplay from Parting. He feels the urgency to go back in. Okay, these Zealots are going to come down, but even with Charge, that's just a lot of plus one melee Zerglings. The Archons redrop in the main. The, the pressure is on. Parting needs to do damage here. He doesn't want to go down 2-0 in this series. Once again, 12 Queens walk over, and he's just got to leave. Extra warp in on the third base. As long as he keeps the third alive, he can definitely stabilize. He's on almost identical workers right now. But once again, the Zealots charge out, get surrounded. He's got nothing else here. This Zealot thinks about joining in. He realizes then he'll have nothing in his wall. If that third gets canceled, this is a nightmare. And the Archon drop even gets forced home. Oh, a nightmare situation for parting. And Stefano just playing a very low economy, low drone Heavy aggression Zergling style, and now he's got plus two melee on the way. He's actually building spines. He thinks there's got to be some sort of Zealot arc on all, and he's like, look, you're on two base. I got to be worried. He's droning, but he's spining at the same time. I think he'll cancel those spines at the last second upon realizing that all of Parting's units at home. And there we go. Third base goes back down again. Oh, are we going to keep those spines? I think he might just let them finish, I guess. He's trying to drone up. He's... Still, once again, barely even on workers, but oh my god, another cancel, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. Parting! Parting! Oh, big boy parting is is on a one-way train to Dicktown right now. Ah, I mean, normally he's the one driving the soul train, he's checking people's tickets, he's conducting it. He's like, yep, sentry sits here, sentry sits here, here's an immortal, here's another sentry. Now, oh, that's the GG that you type when I walk into your base. Get fucked. But this game, there's just Zerglings everywhere. They don't have tickets, and they're just ignoring him. He's like, you're not meant to be here. This game's fucked. Uh, and Stefano's just been in control. That being said, I do feel like Stefano should have found a window to drone up more during this game. I think he should have a little bit of a bigger lead than he does, considering how many things have gone right for him. Uh, I think he's just been so worried about the crazy all-ins parting could do since... He hasn't really been able to scout the main or the natural. So he's always been like, yeah, I'm canceling the third, but is it even a real third? Did you really want that? Uh, but now, finally, he's got 64 drones up. He's got lots of lings, plus two melee. So if he gets any banelings in a mineral line, the probes will just disappear. Uh, Hydra upgrades. So you have the Hydra movement? Yeah, he's already got Hydra movement. And sorry, guys. Uh, Groove Spine's starting up now as well. So when plus two melee finishes, he can already start ranged upgrades. And considering the third base isn't even finished, already having plus two melee, uh, being able to start range as well is just going to be so good. The creep exploding on the map, of course, using the control from earlier in this game. And Oh, he's going to find the prism! Quickly parting, you got to one... Ah, oh, it, just, it just dies. And he only loses one... Ah, oh, great Hydralisk Micro. Only loses one Hydra for it as well. Stefano all over this game. That is the only piece of pressure Parting has. Now, hats off to Parting. He's made five High Templar ages ago. He's gathered a ton of energy on them. He's got four more High Templar up here. He's saying, look, how do I get back in this game? I'm fucked. I've got, I've got so little. 
And he just says, you know what, Psy Storm. Obviously, Psy Storm is a massive comeback spell. Huge AoE damage potential. He's just going to sit on them, slowly try to add upgrades, slowly try to build the Immortal Count, get out an Observer, and just try to take a fourth and defend it. For him, it's going to be Turtle Simulator, where his entire game plan is trying to pull his Protoss fucking neck back inside the big stormy shell. Meanwhile, Stefano is going to be some dickhead who's caught the turtle, is trying to, like, fucking lever its shell off with a fucking gigantic... Baneling shaped, uh, Baneling shaped fucking hook or something. I don't know. Random analogy metaphor aside, a, a metodology, met metology, an anatophore, whatever we want to call it. It's, uh, it's not really doing the job. But what we're trying to say is Stefano's way ahead and has a big fuck off army. But if he attacks all in one direction, Psystorm might be the great equalizer he is looking for. He's just going to be getting set up here with the big spread. Banelings are looking for the High Templar. The High Templar have to go back at the same time. A counterattack comes in there. Parting's not watching. He doesn't Psystorm. And he's going to lose a bunch of high energy High Templar as well as 13 probes. Funnily enough, that actually probably could have gone even worse since he wasn't watching it. But it's still bad enough. The Ling Bane spreading. The storm starting to run low. Another High Templar gets taken out by Banelings. There's only two or three storms left in here and the fourth base has been cancelled the third mineral line ransacked parting needed to be watching his minimap he needed to drop the storm on those banelings and then maybe this could have been a different scenario maybe he could have just cancelled the fourth instantly rebuilt it being back in the game but as it is stefano's in control and he is not going to be letting go of the steering wheel anytime soon imagine a literal turtle simulator what you just like swim and you're like oh some plankton you just... Do turtles eat plankton? What do turtles eat, guys? Does anyone know what turtles eat? I have no idea. Ooh! Archon Snipe. Storm only tickles a few units. Not a, not, a, not a big deal. I love this Archon skin, by the way. It's my absolute favorite. They've got this thing on their back straight out of XCOM. It's fantastic. Definitely the guys that made that art. Big XCOM fans. Oh! Oh my god! The flank comes in, comes in, comes in. I don't think the Banelings on the third got into the mineral line that time. There were some that kind of rolled in from this top side. Yeah, yeah, there were Banelings and Hydras, but the Immortals and Cannons defended it that time, but he just gets surrounded, and that's a 2-0 lead. Big Brain Stefano takes another map, and the 2-0 lead against Deviant Parting, as, as Stefano has nicknamed him. The next map is Acid Plant. Sly Starcraft, thank you so much for the 100-bit cheer. For calling Stefano a sick puppy. He is, man. He's brutal. He's brutal, dude. He's just like, I'm going to make 400 Zerglings and 12 Queens. There is nothing more frustrating than Archon dropping and there just being like eight, en wait, eight Queens there with like full energy bars. It is always like the most tilting thing when I'm doing my Archon drop. I'm like, why do you have eight Queens here? That's just dumb. You're not meant to have eight. And even if you like, you do heaps of damage to one or two Queens, it's like Transfuse. Band-Aid, 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 Band-Aid. And you're like, can you can you fucking die? Can can you maybe do that? You know, and and it just you just have to find another angle. So the Archon drop did nothing. The Archon drop was already delayed that game. Remember, it was already delayed. Why? Because of the Zergling, Zergling's going on the third. He cancelled the third like four times in a row. Parting one or two mistakes where he let his first little group of zealots and adepts get surrounded by the Zerglings. That was really huge. That was really big. But. You know, I like the fact that Stefano, he built so many lings and he decided to use that by attacking the cyber core. So this was an intelligent move. He spotted the prism. He knew Archons were about to warp in. He knew the timing. And he said, if right at about 10 seconds before you want to warp in those High Templar, I just click on your cyber core. If you want to save that, you need to warp in at home. Like if you don't warp in at home, like one Adept or one Zell in the wall is not going to, you know, you're going to have to spend a bunch of structures re-walling. The game's going to get messy. He knows there's only four gateways from the Protoss. So he forces the warp in on, a, on Adepts and Zealots. The warp prism suddenly becomes a paperweight. It's just sitting there. It has to wait for another warp in cycle. Finally gets the Archons in there. And he was so over-prepared for the Archons. They just did nothing. The Archons ended up flying all the way back across the map, getting home, being like, Okay, and then they actually tried to go back across the map to pressure again because he had so little scouting. Parting had no information, he had no pressure, he had to do something. And the Lings came back in and cancelled his, his base again. So that was actually just disgusting. It was it was brutal. It was it was too good, man. We are going to see a nice early probe come in, have a bit of a scout. Good luck, have fun. Smile, man. It's funny, don't forget I'm watching you. <laughs> I feel you. Give me five and you'll truly feel me. Okay. 
These two got a little bit intimate in this game. A little bit intimate. A little bit of uh, interesting chatter between the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Probe's gonna have a little bit of a harass. Just a standard expand build here for parting to the core, into the second gas. And we'll see a second pylon go down soon as well. Can I do replay analysis after each match? Yeah, I can. I can. I can hop back in. If if you guys have specific questions, it's 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 easier because then I have spe special stuff. Sometimes I just don't have anything exciting to talk about, or I remember it later. But yeah, I, I often click the rewind button and look at some stuff. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I. I'm not going to do it after every map because it would just take too long. But when there's something I really want to highlight or I want to double check just for my own curiosity and my own understanding, I will absolutely do that, my man. All right, all right, all right. Twilight Council for parting. Uh, could be Glaive Depths, could be Fast Archon Drop. Uh, like DTs into Archon Drop. Yeah, a few different options. Overlord's going to scout straight away, though. Stalker is coming, so it's going to punish that. Was this Stalker first? Oh, Stalker first. That's pretty rare. Um, Stefano is not going to get to safety in time. That's 100% a kill. Parting even stutter stepping it just to make sure. And third base down for Stefano. Stefano just mining work. Uh, gas with one drone. That overlord bleeds all over the Twilight Council. And uh, oh, actually, I remember this game. So as Stefano, if you don't get any more scouting, I'm, I'm priming you guys because I remember this is the sickest build from parting this game, guys. This is the sickest build. So as Stefano, yeah, yeah, look, look, he wants to get some more info, but he says Twilight Council. So he's been denied vision now. So what you assume here as the Protoss player is you're up against an Archon Drop, a Glaive Adepts. No matter what the, the kind of thing is, you need to get extra gases, a roach warren, and build a pack of roaches, and a lair, so you have detection ready for DTs. And you need to have that ready by about 4 minutes, 30, maybe 5 minutes. So that's kind of what Stefano is going to have to have to aim for. He's going lair, second gas geyser, and roach warren, right? I'm pretty sure you, you've got to go roach warren. You could go baneling nest, but usually, yeah, roach warren. So he goes Roach Warren, and then we've got double Stargate. So what Parting did is he showed the Twilight Council, hasn't used it for fucking anything. He's like, no, 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 I know you're going to react to that. You know what you're going to do? You're going to build Roaches. You're not going to drone quite as hard as you would against the Stargate play. And guess what? You might have a Spore, but you're definitely not going to have two Spores from Mineral Line. And you know what Roaches suck against? I'm just going to go a bunch of Phoenix. Two Star Phoenix was so, so sick. <laughs> This is, this is such a, a filthy, filthy adjustment here. Um, and, and Stefano has no idea. So, he, yeah, he's building a spore there, a spine in the main. Thinking about Archon Drop coming in, he's like, yeah, spine will really help against that. Uh, he's on just 42 drones, and he's already building roaches. You see here at 4 minutes 30, already building units. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. It's okay to build roaches versus Stargate play, but you don't need them this early. Pro players would like to drone 50, 55, 60 drones, then build the ground-based combat units. Stefano, though, he has no idea this is happening. He's actually looking for a warp prism with his Zerglings right now because he's like, hmm, I wonder if it's coming to my third or my main base. He's got an Overseer ready because he thinks it might be DTs, Overlord spread around, and the Phoenix count is just growing in the back. And as these next two pop out, Parting's going to go across the map. He's now using the Twilight to start charge. Beautiful play here by Parting. If he can just take a third with these Zealots... I think that Adept just went and killed another Zergling Scout, so he's trying to keep Stefano in the dark, yeah. If he can just take the third, and then start killing a ton of drones with these Phoenix, this is a beautiful opening for parting. And it's such a it's such a mind game. Look, there's more and more roaches coming. Stefano's like, well, you've got to be doing something ground-focused. I definitely don't need drones right now. Let's just build heaps of units and make sure I don't die. And let's go to Stefano's camera. This is the first moment where he sees the Phoenix and he goes, oh, what the frack. He's actually immediately hidden his units and he's trying to sneak them across the map, hoping they can cancel the third while the Phoenix is still stuck on his side of the map. But the Phoenix see the Lings rallying across the map and they're going back. He's trying to put down spores, but the Phoenix have found him off Stefano's camera and they're just going to take him down. Yep, just picking up the roaches one at a time. And while it's not as good as killing drones, it's perfectly fine. Because in this scenario, the Zerg has invested so much in army, his drone count kind of sucks. Zerglings did pick off, I think, one or two probes there. The Phoenix is going to come in. There's Zealots, there's an Adept, there's a Shield Battery. They're going to fight up against the wall there. The Roaches, the Zerglings come in. It looks like a good surround, but there's so few Roaches left. And once the Roaches are gone, the Zealots and the Shield Batteries will stand strong. The Zergling count is washing up against this. 
and that's it. The Phoenix damage is getting so critical. The Roaches are just disappearing. This Adept with six kills there. Oh my god, the Adept and the Zealot. Zealot has eight kills. Holy crap. Eight kill Adept. Uh, no, nine kill Adept, eight kill Zealot. Parting, throws out the attitude. And, and that's such a bad situation for Stefano. Investing in all that army, he tried to use the army, but parting was too quick on the draw. Way too quick on the draw. Now, maybe if Stefano had it not rallied Lings across the map, but just had them pop out where they were and just kind of chill at each hatch, it wouldn't have been as big of a tell. But seeing Lings pop out and like flooding across the map, Parting immediately knew he had to fly back. He spotted the Roaches and, and being able to intercept the Roaches before they got rid of the Zealots, that was the key. If he got the plus, uh, I mean, the Zerglings don't have plus one, but if he got the Zerglings there with very few ground units, you know, the Phoenix can't deal with the Zerglings. And that's where maybe you get yourself a Nexus snipe. You snipe that Nexus, you're back in the game. As it is, Stefano's not down and out, but he's definitely in an awkward position. Now, he does have two spores up for base, but look, he's pulling the weakened Phoenix out, uh, and he's just massacring the Overlords. A huge supply block. Ooh, flies into a spore crawler, but barely keeps them all alive. His third base is getting fully saturated. It is still a worker lead for Stefano, but what's he got that shoots up? A single queen at the third base. So he's, he's got nothing that shoots up. The Phoenix are just going to keep coming in. They're going to keep whittling down the worker count. And now as the workers stabilize, we've got six more gateways going down. A warp prism. Uh, we're going to just see, yeah, uh, transition into ground play here for parting. And the Overlords continue to die. Stefano in a permanent supply block here. He's trying to squeeze out Hydras, but they're coming out in such small numbers. And Phoenix production's halted, but these 13 Phoenixes have already done so much. The unit's loss tab tells the story of this game. 4,000 resources lost to just 750 lost on parting side. Parting pulls out the crazy mind game and smashes uh, the opening stage in this game against Stefano. He's going to lose a few Phoenix here, but I guess they're not as useful at this stage anyway. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's worth it. I, I, it's, it. Obviously, it's like it gives an advantage in that it just slows Stefano down. But I kind of like having the Phoenix alive a bit longer. This is still a scary number that can, say, kill drones trying to get to the fourth. Zerglings are running around up there. We've got a few Zealots. Archon's coming. Oh, he's going to go for a snipe on the fourth base. He's trying to sneak around the map. I love it. Do we have Psy Storm on the way yet? Or Immortal Production? No Immortals, no Psy Storm. And just, I guess he just does a huge gateway timing. He's making more Zealots. He's starting to make plus one attack. Fourth base is on the way for parting, but he's, he's building very few meat meaty units right now. Uh, I don't know if it really matters, though. Yeah... If he gets that fourth base, Stefano is back in the Stone Age, and I don't think Stefano can contest it. He comes out in the open. The Phoenix are almost a match for this small Hydra count. Add the Zealots and the Archons in as well, and you're in a pretty bad position. Zerglings do find the base. They could cause some trouble, but uh, a Warpin should be able to keep that alive. And as parting, you can just fall back here if you want. Ooh, Warprism in the open. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you want to force the issue here. I think hanging around has already been good because it slowed down a fourth. But now Parting finally decides to transition. He says, all right, I mean, maybe I can't kill you with just mass charge lot into Hydra Bane. Probably not the smartest idea. Adds Storm, adds plus one, adds a second Robo. It's not a particularly fast transition from Parting, but it doesn't need to be. You're up against a three base Zerg going up to a faster fourth base for the Protoss. Like, that's insane. If the Protoss is up on bases, it's always good for them. Plus one melee Zerglings versus zero, zero charge lots, but there's just too many charge lots. This time around, the Zealots do win the engagement. Phoenix picking up random Zerglings. Oh no, Hydras get three Phoenix kills. A nice play there by Stefano. Trying to take the front fourth now. He is High Templar morphing in though. And uh, those, oh god, that's going to be a ton of Storm energy. Still don't have any Immortals on the field. Stefano just kind of waiting to go to that next level right now. Uh, parting, sorry, waiting to go to that next level. Stefano not going to drone up a fourth. He's just transferred workers there from the main as half of its patches are gone. He's trying to take a fifth, but these zealots are going to make quick work of that. He's got no units at home. He's got so little map vision. You can just see how hamstrung Stefano has been in this game. He'd normally have overlords on the edges of the map. He'd have zergling spotters. He doesn't have that this time. He's going to send some units back, but he's actually misclicked it. The zealots are going to hit his natural. Uh, nice force fields. I think caught a bunch of Ling Bane there. And these zealots starting to pick off some workers, trading off with some zerglings few banelings running into them. This is all good trades for parting since he has the larger economy. 
How many Hydras are we at? 31 Hydras? 33 Zergings, 10 Banelings. Now, normally what makes the Hydra Bane so scary is 30 Hydras. That's all you need. But they don't have any attack upgrades. Plus two melee isn't even done for the Banelings. It's normally a big Baneling count, and it's the Baneling runbys that do the damage. But Baneling runbys are going to do nothing to that defense. Okay, cleans up a Zealot counter. That's nice. What about this base? This base does not have as much defense, but it's got a lot of High Templar. It's got more of the army, and we know that's where Stefano is going to be focusing on. Uh, with his storms because the top side is so bloody well defended like you're not going to break that even if Stefano is not watching I mean he's actually going silly with the amount of high templar and archons he has up there that's that's like overly safe that's how parting likes to play it though parting loves to just kind of have insurance in his games so even if you kill a little section of his army he makes a mistake he's always got another section somewhere else which he'll uh he'll be able to kind of storm you down with there is a uh, supply lead for Stefano. 20 army uh, army supply lead, to be exact. And he's just going to kind of rotate down. But look at this. Parting just keeps him busy. Parting's just like, no, nah, give me time to get plus two. Make some more Archons. Make some more Immortals. He's adding shield batteries as well. These trades aren't necessarily great for parting, cost for cost. But he's getting up more of these value units. And the thing is... The later you go with Storm, with Archons, it becomes ridiculously powerful and efficient. These Archons out front, already taking out a lot of these Banelings. The High Templar come forward, but they don't, yeah, they, they didn't have any support for a few seconds there. Okay, Storm on the left-hand side takes out those Hydras. These High Templar nestled in the back. The probes all pull behind the Nexus. Even if you lose the Nexus, it's not the end of the world as parting here. But definitely uh, a nice angle for Stefano. He's baiting out a lot of Storms, but most of the Banelings are gone. And there's still a lot of storm in that pack of High Templar. More storms coming through. More again. Stefano's taking about as good a fight as he can, though. He's got to withdraw and wait for more Banelings, though. And a lot of the Archons and Immortals survive. They will regenerate their shields. There's still a lot of high energy High Templar. That's eight storms sitting there just in those four High Templar alone. And with the fourth base surviving, the probes surviving, the worker advantage being up about 10. Parting will hold on. Will stabilize, and with a mothership core about to pop out, more immortals on the way. The phoenix dropping any potential, dr uh, blocking any drop on the left hand side, and that's just a nice position, dude. Parting has played this game very well. Very, very impressed with how Parting played this game. What's the correct move as Stefano once you see the phoenix? Do you get five spores of base and rush hydras and pump queens? The last thing you want to do is rush Hydras, Jaden. So this is a common mistake players make where they're like, oh, I need to get Hydras. I need to get Corruptors. Um, once you get a much bigger economy, sure. Arrogant Ambassador, no shout out for your friend today. No shout out for your friend. Um, you've been asking every day, dude. Today I'm going to break the cycle. I'm not going to give you that shout out. Senpai will not notice you. Uh, but basically what happens is you've got to build two spores per base, maybe even three. Like I like to go two a base and a kind of connecting spore. And you just need to build extra drones. Oh my god. Wow! Oh, that was almost perfect Baneling. It's the Frax. Stefano's the only guy who can almost break a like 70 probe Protoss that's got a mothership mass size storm and a fifth base on the way with like 55 drone Hydra Bane. Like, you're, you should be dead. That's why I was not really paying attention to that fight. I was like, yeah, Stefano's just going to wash up. He actually killed a lot of the High Templar. Unfortunately, I think he didn't have detection. So he actually ran some of the Banelings past some of the juicy High Templar and let them survive, uh, which was a bit unfortunate because, you know, without vision, he's like, uh, High Templar are probably about here, you know, detonate the Banelings at what you think is the right time. Sometimes you miss the juicy targets. Anyway, long story short, what I was talking about before is you just need to way overbuild drones uh, so that your mineral account stays above a certain count. Phoenix only have so many lifts, and if they stay in Spore Crawler range, they're going to die as well. So... If you get your drone count above a certain amount, you, you basically just can absorb enough damage. So you make sure all your overlords are above your spores in your mineral line, your queens are in your mineral line up next to the spores, and you just keep droning and droning and droning. A lot of people will be like, oh, I've got 60 drones, let's build hydras. And guess what? The phoenix come in, kill 15 drones, you're at 45 drones. You don't want to be building hydras or 45 drones, you're never going to get enough of them out. But if you go to 80 workers and then you lose 15 drones, you're still at 65. So you can, you can, you know, kind of continue with that Hydra production, right? So basically the idea is you get some extra spores and you overbuild drones to make up for the fact that you're definitely going to take, loss, uh, take losses. So you delay gas, you delay tech, you delay the mobile anti-air, you just build extra spores, maybe an extra queen or two, but mostly extra spores. 
drone crazy hard and wait until your economy is higher than it would normally be and then you can do it changeling block holy crap stefano is gonna take out the fifth base how does he keep doing this i mean this is 20 lurkers right now 19 lurkers the phoenix is gonna kill one or two of them Ooh, ooh, ooh. Carriers have come in there now. That's only two carriers, though. This is enough Hydras to kill those Interceptors. As long as the Hydras stay behind the Lurkers, this is an army which Parting cannot dislodge. But Parting's got two more carriers about to come out. He's got plus two air weapons about to come out. The Lurkers have to evacuate. What do you do? As I mean, Stefano, you've got to get the Adaptive Talons. But he's, he needs more Hydras right now. He needs more anti-air. And he somehow needs to get rid of the High Templar. And that's the hard question, especially because his whole army at the front can barely contest what Parting has. And Parting just Zealot counterattacks over and over again. <coughs> are these plus three Zealots? Yes, they are. Plus two Zerglings dish out quite a bit of hurt, especially the plus two range Hydras as well. But yeah, Stefano needs to kind of split up Parting's army, get rid of the High Templar, and then the Lurkers can kill everything on the ground if they can make it attack into it, and the Hydras can kill the Interceptors. It's a dream. It's a dream. It's a bit of a Zerg fantasy more than anything. I don't know if this is like the real world, what I'm talking about. I don't think all of those things go right very often. But Stefano is making a game out of what is a pretty terrible position. His economy sucks, guys. It is... Uh, I mean, if you if you had to give a suck on Stefano's economy, it would be a little bit salty right now, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, it's, it's not that efficient. It's... It's just desperation, and it's all about catching Parting out of position. He says, you know what, I haven't really poked up this side before. And immediately realizes how bad a decision that is, because there's 37 cannons and shield batteries. The Phoenix even being dickheads. The Phoenix will eventually go down. Uh, Lurker's actually so good against cannons, but the shield battery is healing them up, and, and a lot of Lurkers are dying. At the same time, in the middle of the map, these Lurkers go down. Great flank. These Hydras and Lurkers down here all separated, dealing with the Zealot counters. Divide and Conquer is the name of the game, and Parting is doing it like a boss. Those cannons just never went down because the battery's healing them. They kept providing detection. These Hydras have tried to fight, but the Zealot Archon is too powerful. Carriers, Immortals, Archons push through the middle, and Stefano, I mean, he's made a good go of it. He's fought as hard as he possibly could. He's got the Oversight Overseer with its eyeball sticking out of its head here, providing increased uh, detection range. That's going to help the Lurkers damage these units as they come up the ramp, but it's just not enough. Only three Lurkers... Plus three range, not quite done. Kills a lot of the ground units, but the carriers stand strong. And uh, Parting just continually, continually rolling through these fights. But he's having to work for it, and that's why we're impressed with Parting, uh, with Stefano right now. You know, Parting played a, a really tricky opening, very smooth game from then on out. But Stefano keeps making it a little bit closer than it should be. And that's not Parting necessarily playing super bad. It's just like the tiniest little slip-ups in his engagements, which Stefano's... Uh, able to capitalize on with his perfect execution of the engagements. And as this uh, wheels down, the Immortals and the Archons clear that base. GG! Exclamation mark, says Stefano. And uh, that's going to be that one. So, as I said, this is just a great mind game play. It was a very meta play by Parting. Um, Stefano was overcommitting to Roaches, uh, playing, you know, under the assumption that there was a warp prism there was dts or charge zealots or something like that on the map when there wasn't it was just stargates uh what's a uh, there's another question here can you analyze minute 14 of stefano's what's minute 14 let's take a look what exactly what exactly is your question in flair Oh, what are you what are you what are you interested in i mean like what what, what fascinated you at this point in the game really curious <clears throat> so guys we're going to just do a little bit of replay analysis on this one quickly uh parting of course has just tied up the series not tied it up but he's put a point on the board so this is minute 14 where stefano is like hey i'm dead in this game i got no economy I'm going to try and hope you push forward and I get Banelings on your High Templar and my Hydras are so well spread that Storm isn't very effective and they're all attacking at once while most of your army's stuck behind each other. Parting steps into the concave and this is like just the, the gift. This is like Stefano was on his knees praying and he had, his, he had his prayers answered. Now the problem, as I said here, this Overseer was too far behind so he didn't know where the units were. So you see he's clicking his Banelings through the army. 
but he doesn't know where to detonate them. So he's actually almost already on top of the High Templar, but he lets a few of them survive. So if we... Yeah. Some of them blow up there. But then... Okay, he actually A moved at a point there. He should have manually detonated. So that's his mistake. So, I mean, it's it's not a mistake I would ever be critical of someone in a cast for because it's, it's, it's not a common situation. This is super rare. Check it. So we're on Stefano's vision. So let me select something that's not going to die during the fight. So what happens is these units are too far in front of the Mothership Core. And also the Overseer comes forward and starts revealing units from about here and further backwards. So when he A moves the Banelings somewhere about here... And maybe he did manually detonate. No, 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 that one just blew. Some of them are blowing up just because they're getting killed by Archon shots and stuff. But then he A moves, and you'll notice his Overseer still doesn't have vision of the High Templar up here. See the High Templar and Archons, which is the money shot. His Banelings were on top of them. But when he A moves, they don't have vision of that. But they've just gained vision of these Immortals because the Overseer has just entered detection range. So because that Overseer just entered detection range and he's given an attack move, the Banelings have said... Oh, that's a unit. That's the closest unit to us. That's an enemy thing. Let's go blow that up. And they actually run away from these last three High Templar. Or four High Templar. Four or five. Some of them still die, but three High Templar survive that fight when it should have been none. Still a fantastic engage for Stefano, but it's one of those cool little interactions, right? Which I'm sure Stefano wasn't even aware of in the heat of battle. Uh, but we get the, the fun part of, of looking at that. Yeah. So the, the thing is... As parting there, you, you just never want to fight into a prepared concave. So how do you do that as parting? Well, normally you change angles. It takes forever for, for Stefano to set up that huge spread of Hydras, but you push in from this side, and Stefano has to reorient his entire army, and he, he reorients it, like, maybe spread there and there and there, and then you just, like, push down here. And if you, if you push into one side of their flank, right? Weatherman time, bitches. Let's go. Weatherman time. Very, very basic formation stuff, um, but something we often don't think about, right? That's the concave. You attack in. Maximum spread. Your storms are ineffective. All their units are attacking at once. That's the Hydras. This is the Protoss army. But if instead you attack over here, these guys aren't attacking. This is not a concave anymore. Suddenly, they need to readjust their concave. They need to try to pull these guys back. So they're going to try and pull back. And these guys over here try to pull in. So this section tries to pull back. Those sections try to pull in. And then if you, in reaction to that, veer even further to the right, you basically, you tilt their battle line. So you're engaging one section, right? Which is probably going to clump up when it's pulling back automatically anyway, right? You might be like, oh, but aren't the other units going to flank you and come in with a big flank? If you keep pushing hard enough to the right, these units inevitably are going to clump up on a smaller surface area here. And that's your money spot. That's your money spot for your storms. So you can kind of be moving to the right, move this way, shoot, move this way, shoot, engaging these. And as these units come in, because they're like, fuck, we need to help our other guys. We've got to get in there. They're naturally going to clump up more and your storms are going to be way more, way more effective. I know that's fucking beautiful art there, but hopefully you guys get the idea. I think it's fun once in a while to actually display something um, visually and paint like that and really talk about it. This looks like the moments before my junior football team loses the championship match. <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, totally. Totally, Black Wamba. Yeah. I don't know how you're supposed to support that, but yeah. I think people should should consume whatever content they enjoy. That's what I think. <laughs> Seems like Cyril rushes Hydras, but he's likely already at 60 drones consistently, says Jaden. Yeah, it, the thing is, if you're rushing Hydras, that's a completely different opening, right, Jaden? And rushing Hydras is dangerous. And Cyril and other Protosses have been killed by charged at all ins. Uh, really well microed Archon drops have traded very, very efficiently against their Ling Queen sometimes. Um, because they don't have roaches out. And, and even if you go Banelings, it's, it's hard to defend. So Hydra Rush play is not particularly good against a Twilight opening. So what you need to remember as a player, what happened in the early game of that game? 
pa- Stefano loves playing plus one melee into Hydra Bane, but he saw the Twilight Council and he said, oh, I've got to play Roaches now. Parting said, you're too fucking good with these Zerglings and these Hydras. I'm going to make you play a different style, which you're probably not as good at, but also is very, very much weaker against my, my Phoenix style. Because you've invested all that money in Roaches, Roach Speed, you've built those units off a lower work account, which is what I was mentioning before. If you're going to Hydras, you're going to be, you're going to be, especially you spot a Stargate, you go, oh, it's an Oracle. You're droning a lot harder. You're getting a bigger economy earlier. So you can get into those Hydras before the Phoenixes reach critical mass potentially. So that's, that's where that whole interaction becomes very exciting. All right, guys, let's go down here in the bottom left hand side. He is potting. And up here in the top right, in the blue, the Zerg player, it is Stefano. Good luck, have fun, Mr. Handsome says potting. So potting here. He's like, oh, oh, you beat me a couple of games. You're being a little bit cheeky. I'm feeling a bit cheeky too now. So Parning's, Parning's bringing out the Bants, the, the A-game Bants. And uh, yeah, is, is this a cannon rush? Wait, this is Proxy, Proxy Gate. I'm trying to remember what he did in this game. Oh, I think I think I remember. Oh my God. Okay, this is, this is a sick one if you guys haven't seen this. Yeah, yeah. Parting such a dirty boy. So this is the biggest map in the pool. It's a map where you expect people to play very greedy. You expect Protoss to play like Sky Toss or something like that. Stefano's like, yep, just going to send me Overlords out to scout. I've got a hatchery going down. Some people even play three hatch before pool on this map. And Parting's just like, yeah, I'm just going to go build gateways outside your base. How do you like that? <laughs> dirty big boy. I like to party. Yes, yes, yes. Good luck. Have fun, buffoon. Says Stefano. <laughs> what does that mean? Says Parnies. I don't know what the fuck a buffoon is. Stefano's like, that's very... It means you're very good. It means you're very good, buddy. Good luck. Have fun. Lindo. I, does anyone get that reference? What the fuck is a Lindo? Jesus. I, I love when people who don't have English as their native language smack talk each other in English. It's great. Very good too, I suppose. Of course. <laughs> fuck is a Lindo? <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyway, so the probe comes in. Zealot's being chrono boosted, and there is a gas going down behind this. So it is going to be um, some sort of stalker or adept follow up or something like that out of these gateways. So parting here, just being a uh, dirty big boy, is going to surprise him with a big rush. Stefano has no idea what's going on. The probe has actually been harassing the drones, it's been stealing a little set of minerals, he's being a cheeky boy. I feel like that's the guy delivering the messages to Stefano saying, good luck, have fun, Lindo. Ha <laughs> ha, he's like, he's a Lindo. I don't know. Lindo equals pretty, says Davey. Thank you, Davey. <laughs> okay, so he's calling him a pretty boy. Fair enough. Cybercore is down back at home. Overlord's going to come in and be like, oh yeah, just a Cybercore. Ah, oh, far out. There's zealots in me base. <laughs> so Parting's just going to get the hatch, right? What do we got? We're going to go Spines? Double Spine in the main. Yeah, yeah, Stefano's going to go for Spines. He's worried about just dying to Mass Zealot. He's going to immediately send some Zerglings across the map to try and counter pressure. Those can be very effective since, remember guys, there is no production at home. And it's going to be Adepts as the follow-up, or at least one Adept is starting. The Zealot's going to go straight for this hatch. The hatch is going to go down now. Keep in mind, Stefano can just retake that. He's got three Spines built. Is he going to let all three finish? I feel like that's a bit over the top. Ah, uh, at the same time, you really don't want to die to this. He's pulled off gas, so he's very mineral focused right now. Cancels one spine. Yeah, good choice, good choice. His overlord sees that there's a gas mining. He knows there's going to be adepts afterwards or stalkers or something like that. Ooh, those zerglings go down. These zerglings are going to get in. Ah, oh my god. What wins? One bitey boy or one taser boy? Well, turns out when the taser boy has a big fuck off battery bubble next to him, the taser boy destroys two bitey boys. Get wrecked. The zerglings go down. The probe holds the wall. That little probe always dreamt of being a bouncer. Throughout history, whenever you've got a probe in a wall, what happens? The zerglings wreck it. Best case scenario, it, it manages to actually throw up a couple of... Uh, a couple of buildings to wall off before it dies. That time around, though, it was like revenge. Of all the probes who've died on friggin' bouncer duty in the wall, all the probes whose job it was to say, nah, Zerglings, you're wearing the wrong shoes, mate. You're not allowed in this club. Uh, finally, finally, things have changed, and oh, gets a cancel on the hatch. Just runs past the spines. I think that, no, that would be a crazy shade. There's a Nexus going down behind it as well. <laughs> Parting still. With just, I mean, these links could have gone across the map, and they wouldn't have been away. He would have had to full wall. 
That's a big misstep. Stefano took so long to take out this gateway. I think that was a big misstep. He should have gone across the map. He's finally going to depower these gateways. But I, I really think he should have gone over there. Because there was no warp gate and there was no unit at home. No cannons could be built. Even with the shield battery, the Zerglings would be able to wear their way through there. Probes do not do a lot of damage. Nonetheless, the Queens and Zerglings are going to try and clear this up. Another hatch is going down at the front. Stefano desperate to get his economy back up into a not terrible position. He has down only three workers right now. If he can get like a third hatch up straight away as well, that'd be great. But look at this. Parting is just keeping him busy for so, so long. And is he going to dive? I, I really think like that's the problem for Stefano in this scenario. The moment he jumps on these units, the Adepts shade into the mineral line and just pick off a bunch of drones on their way out. Not only that, actually parting, it's probably worth recalling. Yeah, maybe be a little bit more annoying. Look at this. He's just hanging out in the corner, just trying to be frustrating, trying to create threat. But at any point, he can just recall home. Um, he does, he's almost got 50 energy. Is he gonna do it? Just recall. Yeah. So sick, man. So sick. He's like, nah, we're just gonna go home now. By the way, 10 probes on my natural. Yours is just finished. Third base is now down for Stefano. He's going plus one melee again. He loves plus one melee lings, queens. He loves this early, early style. It's, it's really good. Now, killing these gateways is important because if a warp prism... Or a pylon repowers these. Suddenly, parting has insane production. Overlord comes in, sees three gateways, a robo, and a stalker. I mean, Stefano's got to know that this is just an all-in follow-up. Even getting rid of these gateways. Uh, as Stefano, it's so scary to drone up right now. But it's also so scary not to. You're down nine workers already. But you know there's going to be a warp prism coming across the map. Parting says, I show you old school... The famous line, I think, of this series. That's the one we're going to remember. Why? Because there's a little bit of a choo-choo train moving across the map. It's the bloody soul train. A couple of sentries. Yeah, there's no immortals. Doesn't matter. Anything involving force fields and a bunch of douchebaggy units that are about to kill a zerg, I think we can call a soul train at this point. He's going to move across the map. He's going to make even more sentries. And he's going to force field the crap out of these zerglings. Now... You know what? If you have Ravages, sentries kind of suck. That's why this style isn't good anymore. But if you're being Stefano and you're actually going upgraded Lings and Queens towards Hydra Tech or Baneling Tech, he's trying to add a Baneling Nest now, that's just not good against Force Fields. You need the Corrosive Bile to deal with that. Uh, I mean, he's got two Spines and a, and a bunch of Transfuse. That could get the job done. Actually, yeah, I mean, he's got a pretty good unit count. That, I mean, he's, he's just, it's so hard. Because if the force fields are so are really good, there's no counterplay. You've just got to wait for them to expire. You've got to try to maybe flank in. That's why these lings on the other side are really good. He's just going to go for the surround. He dives on top. But look at this little donut in the center. These units going high IQ, says Stefano. At least I think that's what he was trying to say. But uh, he gets a bunch of the units out. But these sentries in the middle are still alive. Oh, man. They're all about to go down, though. Another sentry falls. But a hot pickup from the warp prism. And four sentries do remain. Stefano with a very impressive hold so far. And it actually looks like he's done it. But keep in mind the worker count. He's not droning during this. There's a third bloody nexus on the way. The natural's fully saturated. He's even mining gases. He can just go into like arc on tech. He can macro off the back of this and be ahead. Or he can keep warping in zealots and just create a ridiculous problem for Stefano. But Stefano's coming in with a link counterattack. That's going to be dangerous. That could cause some problems. These queens are going to come down. They've got a lot of energy. That's going to stop him pushing in. Uh, no, just a seven zealot warping going to deflect this. Oh, actually, nice surround by Stefano. He's going to be able to take down all of these zealots, I think. Yeah, it does take them, take them down. But the other zealots warp in, and that's going to be a deflection. The, the Nexus stands strong. Oh, Banelings come in and actually get a surround, but the sentries pick up the last second one more time. And parting here. <laughs> he's, he's still got the economy lead, but he's lost a lot of his valuable units. He's going to go home with the warp prism for now. Plus two melees on the way. There's three hatcheries up, so you know, there's, there's an ounce of hope. For Stefano here, I mean, he's got a lot of Zerglings. He's got a ton of Zerglings. Maybe it's more than an ounce. Yeah, he could get back in this game. But the Warp Prism has proved invaluable. It's saving these units whenever they get surrounded. Uh, a couple of Force Fields baited out there. The Drone Count climbing drastically here. What's the follow-up for Parting? He's got a Forge and a Twilight. We haven't seen a uh, Disruptor Bay. Ooh, it could be Templar Archives, it could be Colossus Bay, or it could just be Blinken plus one. How many sentries have we got? Seven sentries. 
building probes. I, I love Parting's mindset. Like, when you look at the way Parting plays, it's so execution-focused. Like, his follow-ups always seem so simple. It's like, well, I'm just going to attack you with this next thing. And then I'm just going to attack you with this next thing. But he executes it so well, and he, he always seems so confident uh, and kind of smooth, smoothly swapping between one thing to the next. And that's why he seems to very consistently uh, take these games out. And it seems like, yeah, just, just like no Immortals, no Storm, no gas on the third. To, for pure Stalker warp-ins, you only need four gas. How many gateways we got? Nine? Just seven gateways. Okay. He is going to add the gases, so he's going to keep his options open. But he's going to have a very powerful blink timing. Meanwhile, Stefano still only down at 57 workers. He's got only really a pack of lings for safety. Overseer comes in. Observer gets snapped and somehow falls through that glass maybe it's like not even glass wow what even is that some sort of like conveyor belt that you can fall through shit's crazy dog um <coughs> maybe it's glass over like an underground river or something there's water running under there it's like a sewer i don't even know so there's like these tubes all over the map like that hey that's weird massive stalker sentry warp in it's gonna come out uh let's do a force field tally shall we Eight sentries, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Eh, close on 20 force fields here. Uh, Parting is going to be pushing. He's thinking about taking a fourth base as well. He's like, I'm ahead. I'm just going to trade Stalker Sentry with you. You still don't have anything to deal with it. No Broodlords, no Corrosive Vials, nothing that reaches over it except the Hydra attack. And the thing is, the Stalkers have the same range. So with their flexibility, they're going to do just fine. Isolating the fourth base. There's no way to break down here for Steffi. And uh, Steffi is in Trubs right now. Trub dub dub The drone's actually going to get out of there. What's he going to warp in? I just keep warping in Stalkers. Yeah. He even adds another Sentry. Yeah, you, you, need, you need nine. Why not get a tenth? Why not make another sentry? You need more sentries parting, you, you bloody show-off. I love this guy. Fourth base is on the way. Plus two. I would be horrified at the thought of still just building stalkers this deep in the game. But that's because my force fields aren't as good as this man's. The banelings just waddle up to the glass cage, they say. Nope, can't can't get through there. And there's a whole bunch of angry bonobo stalkers in there. Let's let's fall back. Stalkers beat their chest triumphantly. The Stalkers lay down. So force fields. Ooh, a couple of Banelings getting through the top and the bottom, but not really finding the sentries, only hitting the Stalkers. The, the Stalkers also blink on the left-hand side of that. Start isolating the Hydras and Banes. What are these Hydras doing? They don't have the range upgrade. The Hydras only have the movement upgrade. They don't have the range upgrade yet. Oh no, they're not able to reach as far as those Stalkers do. I was like, why is that Hydra not attacking? And uh, yeah, that's just too many units, man. I mean, drones can get pulled now. But the thing is, once again, Stefano's already down in workers. If he pulls 20 drones, I think he might barely hold. But the Hydra upgrade lacking, that hurts. Yeah, great force field just to kind of slow down those units coming down. Good blink micro, pulling these weakened stalkers to the back so they can keep firing and just using the collective hit point pool as efficiently as possible. Banelings rolling in, the stalkers just keep blinking backwards though. So few stalkers actually dying here, whilst the entire Zerg army evaporates, and that's the way it goes with blink stalkers. If they've got that critical mass and you don't have enough firepower, they just don't die. They just keep pulling the weak ones to the rear, and they end up with this gigantic army still alive, heavily bruised and wounded, slowly regenerating its shields while your whole army is friggin' dead. Parting ties it up 2-2. Two to two. GG, well played. Hats off to the big boy for showing Stefano some old school play. Proxy 3 gate Zealot into a couple of cheeky adepts. Expands behind it while a single probe with a battery boy supporting it holds the door against the Zerglings. <laughs> and, uh, and ends up winning the game there with a big stalker sentry. Four base timing attack. Gigantic sentry stalker attack. Beautiful, be it's just an attack. It was just, I'm going to make stalkers and sentries and kill you. GG, well played. Great game there. Um, obviously, Stefano, I think, uh, the spines just did not work out for him. They achieved nothing in that early game. So let's go into this next game. I'll even rewind a second so we make sure we don't miss any bants. And uh, here we go. Good luck, have fun. Says the man down here in the bottom right-hand side. He's managed to tie it up two games apiece. The Protoss player, the big boy, the 2012 world champion. He is potting.
So he was world champion six years ago. But he's still, he's, he's just come back. And I think it's when you come back that you are refreshed. Another guy who was a many time champion. Won tournaments like IPL. I believe he won an ESWC. He's won so many events. He used to be the Korean Slayer. Um, and actually taught the world how to play Zerg in many ways in 2011 and 2012. His name is Stefano. Started out as a, uh, I, I, you know, I've heard stories that he started out as a shy young man. I never really got to meet him in the early days. By the time I met Stefano, he was a uh, very, very confident and experienced player. <laughs> never wears shoes anywhere. Uh, well, not on stage when he's playing. I think my favorite Stefano moment in recent history was when he was destroying the uh, his uh, WESG qualifier, the Middle East and Africa region, as he is uh, Tunisian as well as French. And he fell asleep after game one in his chair. And we had the camera on him and we're there, we're waiting in the lobby and we're like, is, why aren't we going? And I, I like turn around in my casting chair and I'm like, I think Stefano's asleep. <laughs> He's sitting there with like his sunnies on, on his face, he's like in his chair. He's just like he's just crushed game one, and he's like he's like literally sleeping because he's been out at the club till four a.m. And I'm just like, God damn it! Can can one of the admins please wake Stefano up? <laughs> Someone goes over and like is like, uh, are you ready for game two? And he's like, Yeah, sure, whatever. Like, <laughs> kind of comes out of his slumber. He is the absolute rock star of StarCraft. You know, this is the guy who was it. There was the the, the photo of him getting taken away at DreamHack by Swedish police for being too drunk. So they, they put him in the, the drunk tank uh, lock up overnight to, to cool it down. He's, it was like, and it was the photo was just glorious. I don't know which photographer got it, but it was him getting like taken down this corridor with like these two big Swedish police holding him on either side. And he's got like the sunnies on and his hands are, like handcuffed. And he just, he looked like such a fucking badass. And I'm just like, this is Stefano, man. This is his legacy. In a game where we're all a bunch of quiet, shy, introverted nerds, there is one man who stands alone as being an absolute savant of the game, whilst also just being an absolute character who has so much history behind him. Um, and, you know, when he when he returned to the game in 2015, 20, was it 2016? When he, when he, I think he really got serious in, like, 2016, right? He kind of came back with Heart of the Swarm and Abused Swarmers for a while to make a point about how silly that composition was. Uh, but he, he wasn't as serious. Like, in the last few years, he's been really serious. And I feel like Lings and Queens are where he thrives. If Stefano is allowed to just make Queens and Lings and, like, have a mineral-focused economy, he's so good at, like, using these units and, like, just being like, hey, um, I think it was Zerg versus Terran. A lot of Zergs were struggling in 2016. They were saying it's hard. And he's, like, he came back. I think it was WCS Valencia and made a top 16 when we hadn't seen him compete in forever and we were like what the hell he's back and he's like doing an interview and he's like yeah you know it was really funny because everyone's like oh Terran's really Ember but I don't really think so because I don't know I, I hopped on and I realized you don't even need gas like you just make lings and queens and Terran can't do anything to you so I think Zerg's really broken <laughs> and he was just murdering everyone with these like hyper efficient kind of rule of one gas style builds and I was like I love you so much Stefano you are a god um, obviously there are weaknesses that sometimes get exploited when he loves to play these greedy styles. Plus one melee. Queen Ling into Hydra has been something he's been playing a lot against parting. And I think it's time we talk about the game, guys, because it's game five and someone's going all in. His name is parting and he's proxying a robo in gateways. He's going for charge. He's completely pulled off gas. He's not mining at all. Does Stefano know this is coming? I mean, he's seen a Phoenix opening, but he hasn't seen an Oracle. If you get to the 4 minute 30 mark and an Oracle has not shown itself, your hair should stand on end. You should feel goosebumps. And that is exactly what Stefano feels right now. He is like, what are you doing? His Zergling starting to scour the map. He knows something is up. There's a spine crawler in the third base. He knows the Stargate tech has not been committed to, and he spots it. The warp prism on the way, the charge on the way, the zealot starting to warp in. He does get the probe, which is cute, but this is still a very close, fast warp in location. How many queens have we got? Five queens, two more about to pop. Plus one melee, gonna be ready in time for this in 40 seconds. Uh, if he pulls these queens to the front, with the spine, that's going to be a really nice anchor to his defense. This second spine, though, is very exposed. But you know what? His army count is splendid right now. He's only eight workers ahead of parting. And since he's not really mining much gas, he's putting it all into Zerglings. You know, plus one 
actually makes Zerglings not terrible against Zealots. If you don't have plus one, your Zerglings are appallingly bad, but because he went for this upgrade so bloody fast, it actually makes the Zerglings into a not shit unit here. It's still not ideal against a big ball of Zealots, but... Oh my god, there we go, the charge comes in, the transfusers on the spine going down, hot pickups on the zealots, parting, shuffling the weak zealots to the rear of the army, but that means it's not in phase-in mode, there we go, he goes back into phase-in mode, but there's just so many zerglings and queens, the zerglings disengage, the zerglings are the fragile unit with the high damage output, he would much rather the queens or the spines tank, so there we go, yeah, notice he disengages, the zealots charge on the queens, the zerglings re-engage, the zealots have to pull back. So there's a dance going on. The Zerglings want the Zealots to charge in. Whenever the Zealots try to retreat, that's when the Zerglings engage. Stefano, cocky as ever. He knows how committed this was from parting. He knows that you're not mining gas behind this. And parting restarts probe production, starts taking gases. He hasn't put guys back on in the main yet, but he's going to need to do that. Hmm, says Parting, realizing how terrible the scenario is. Even if you're only up a couple workers, you might be like, oh, you're only up, up a few workers. The problem is Stefano has lings, he has queens, he's got banes, he's got three hatcheries, he can drone up in an instant, and he is so far ahead. Meanwhile, Parting is not building any of the good Protoss things. His tech is out of the map exposed, that's going to go down eventually. He doesn't have a Twilight, He, uh, sorry, a Templar Archives, he doesn't have anything else, and I think he's realizing that, yeah... He's, he's, he's in a pretty bad spot. I mean, Parting's going to keep up the, the, the chatter for now. Stefano spamming out some loud and proud hellos to Parting. And, uh, I mean, that's the way to do it, right? That That is the way to do it. Ooh, ooh! Oh, that's a great catch there for Steffi. Gets a nice surround, takes him down. Still no third for Parting. Parting's thinking about it, but he just doesn't have any units. And by golly, that is a lot of Zerglings. That's a lot of Banelings. The Zealots like spread? But doesn't matter how big your spread he is, you're not going to deal with that many explodey, passionate Zerg uh, explosions all over your face. Uh, GG, well played. Stefano takes it out 3-2 to two after one of the most entertaining series uh, I've seen in a while. I think Raynor Classic does beat it out, obviously, just for that story and, and the, the raw level of play. But for Attitude, I haven't seen a series this good in a while. That was amazing. GG, well played, Stefano. My man.